Fellow explorers, I just returned from Sydney, Australia, and I'm gonna share what it's like, what the air travel experience was, what was open, what was closed, everybody's favorite subject, what the masks and vaccine mandates are like, and you know what, this is uh, not my first time in Sydney, so things have changed, and it's not the same, but you know what, the good news is Australia and Sydney is open, and so that's much better than closed, uh, and overall, I still had a really good time, and I think you can too, but let's talk about what the experience traveling is because it's a little bit different nowadays. Uh, and so, uh, first things first, where did I fly out of? I flew out of Los Angeles, LAX airport, and uh, I flew out with this new level eight Voyager suitcase right here. Actually, this is what I'm gonna be giving away later on in today's live stream. One of these, 24 inch, and then one of these, the carry on. But uh, at LAX, um, it was busy as LAX always is, uh, but part of why this was a great time to make this trip is that Australia just canceled all of their COVID travel rules in July of 2020. So there's no more pre-tests going to Australia. There's no vaccine proof. There's no nothing needed um, except the usual electronic visa needed to go to Australia. So that was nice. I was uh, expecting all of this stuff that I had to do and I didn't have to do any of it, which was nice, which would be nice for you as well. Um, also, the US has canceled their COVID test required on the return, so that made the return all that much easier. Uh, now at LAX, I said busy as usual. This is the scene around the gate. You would not know uh, anything was different in LAX. Uh, just busy, lots of people. It took me over an hour to check in at LAX, so the crowds have definitely returned to that airport. The mask mandate is in effect at LAX airport, but um, not really enforced. I would say it's about 50-50, people wearing it, people not. Uh, I stopped in the lounge before I went and had some mediocre food, but what was different in the lounge uh, is they had these little like plexiglass dividers between the seats, so that was different at the United Club than before. Um, boarded the flight 15 minutes late, no big deal. Got on my favorite plane, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner, but uh, no upgrade for me, just hanging out in the back in economy. Um, aisle seat isn't too bad, but I love the Dreamliner because it has all these lighting effects to make it feel like nighttime and to make it feel like the sun is rising. Uh, and uh, yeah, Sonia points out it's a long flight. It has 15 hours from Los Angeles to get to Australia. It's a long flight. And Points Traveler wants to know if it was Qantas. No, it was United, but I like United. There are not many airlines flying the Australia routes right now and few flights, and so um, that made this flight particularly busy, particularly full. The plane in fact, it was a super full flight. Uh, mass mandate required on flights to Australia, um, but also one of those that seemed uh, hardly enforced. Food service was back to its usual offerings, and kind of a neat thing United does is they give you this little thing and tell you what to expect on today's flight. So here it says we've got a departure, and then we've got a meal, and then we got a light snack, and then we've got breakfast before arrival, because the way this flight was timed was uh, like a 10 p.m. departure out of LAX and a 6 a.m. arrival into Sydney. So what did that food service look like? It looked a little bit like this, some fabulous noodles and some salad and some bread. I mean, the usual economy food, not amazing, but um, also not as awful as some of the COVID time uh, offerings were. By the way, awesome Adam, thank you very much for the mood sticker in the chat. I really appreciate that. All right, so after a short 15 hours, uh, we arrived into Sydney, Australia. Now in Sydney, Australia, uh, no masks required in the airport itself there. I'll talk through more of what the mask rules in general in Sydney are, but um, generally no masks indoors in places, including in the airport. Masks required on the flight to Australia, but not once you get off the plane and into the airport, the hodgepodge of mask uh, regulations. And uh, Daryl says, uh, what are the mat the requirements for Australia vaccine card app? None, They are there are no vaccine or test requirements for Australia. They have done away with them all, which <clears throat> is nice. 
So uh, going through Australia, uh, passport control took about 45 minutes. It was pretty long for passport control because there were only a few passport uh, agents. This has um, been my experience on a lot of my international travels recently that um, passport control in most countries is just well understaffed. So big planes show up and there's you know three people there stamping passports. They were friendly enough, but it took a while uh, before I got here to baggage claim to pick up my level eight suitcase that I'll be giving away today. And again, no, not the used level eight suitcase, but a new one for you. Two new ones, in fact. Um, all right, and uh, so then to get from the airport into the city, I took the airport train. It's kind of this neat train that goes into the city, but the airport train, um, another one where like public transportation, masks, no masks. So in fact, uh, masks are required on public transit in Sydney, um, but I don't know, does that mean on or does that mean on your chin or where is it? And I would say this is another one that was about kind of a 50-50 uh, whether people were actually wearing their masks on public transport or not. But as a visitor to Sydney right now, the regulations are basically where you'll need to wear masks as a visitor are on public transit, in taxis, and in Ubers. Uh, basically, that's it. I mean, if you go into maybe some health facilities or some government facilities, those require masks, but most tourists aren't really going to those places. Uh, Kel wants to know when I was flying why I did not fly first class because the first class tickets are like $10,000. So uh, that's why I did not fly first class. Eric says, when he went to Paris, it took an hour in passport control last month, which is crazy. Uh, and Point Traveler says, was the plane full? The plane, super full flight, yes. Uh, and Brian says, gotta love the chin diapers. That's right, so that's the, that's the uh, I, I'm complying with the regulation because it's on or near my face. Uh, and Derek says, I love long flights, four meals, constant snacks, and free movies for the win. Yeah, you can't complain all that much. Um, all right, so then I checked into the Hyatt Regency Sydney, which is in fabulous Darling Harbor, which is kind of a nice area. Um, business seemed back as usual at the Hyatt Regency Sydney mostly it was busy there were a lot of people checking in uh the breakfast buffet was up and running uh, which had a lot of hand sanitizer around and signs to tell you to use hand sanitizer but it was great to see the breakfast uh buffet back um, we had daily housekeeping not one of those like oh we only do it if you offer or we only take out your trash just full housekeeping as there should be. Interestingly enough, uh, like at the High Regions of Sydney, they take their housekeeping so seriously that I saw some of their housekeepers actually wearing hair nets to make sure their hair doesn't drop in the guest rooms because I guess that's actually a source of random hair in the rooms. Um, now, every day my service was a little bit different. My housekeeping was all different. Things were placed in different places. So it's clear that maybe they've got some new staff that isn't trained as well. I did find this as an issue uh, at the front desk when I checked in as well, that like when I asked if their lounge was open, the person who was checking me in had no idea they even had like a concierge lounge. It took another agent to come over to be like, oh, well, sorry, sir, the lounge is currently closed for remodeling, which I find something fairly common at a lot of hotels that had lounges before that they just haven't reopened them and whether it's really being remodeled or it's still just closed, uh, but the lounge um, was not open. Uh, but overall, good uh, and nice stay. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let's see. Um, I flew from LAX, was uh, everything okay and cheap? I wish that LAX wasn't expensive. I don't like the idea that Pegasus cars is bad. It must be cheap. I mean, flights are flights are expensive. Yeah, the flights to Australia are like uh, about $3,000 in economy round trip right now. So um, yeah, that's right. Uh, and so late said, uh, did you find a great deal? That's what the go on ticket price is right now, like 3,000 to 5,000 in economy from LAX to Australia. I've been to Australia before for like $800, but that's just not what it is because that's not, um, that's just busy and there's a few flights and everybody wants to be on them and a lot of people want to go. Point Traveler wants to know if I've ever stayed at the Park Hyatt in Sydney. I have not. Uh, I want to, but um, the room rates were like, they were exorbitant. So this is another one to tell you like, I was sort of hoping, I'm like, maybe it's like down season in Sydney. Uh, and so maybe the Park Hyatt's gonna be cheap. You know, the the um, Hyatt Regency here was running about $200 uh, US a night or like maybe 300 Australian. The Park Hyatt Sydney was running like a thousand Australian a night. So this may be like 700 US, which is a little rich uh, for my 
blood. Gwendolyn wants to know if the people are friendly to foreigners. I think Australians are super friendly to foreigners. Sydney ciders, um, especially now, I think after COVID, there's been so few visitors that it's, I think they're happy to have them back, frankly. Um, wherever I was as an American, people could tell and, and they just love to love to chat with me. I would say the interesting conversation was with my Uber driver who wanted to know my opinions about Trump as a president and the January 6th hearings, which I'm not going to go into here because we don't really talk about politics on Yellow Productions. Politics free zone. Um, but I thought that was an interesting question from the Uber driver. Uh, Gene says it's winter there. It is currently winter, so the seasons are flipped in the southern hemisphere from the northern hemisphere, so it was uh, indeed fairly cold. Uh, and Brian says if I went to Sydney or Melbourne too, uh, just Sydney, I was there for a uh, conference at the Sydney International Convention Center. Uh, all right, so in Darling Harbor, this is the wildlife zoo and aquarium and madame uh tussauds the wax museum and that's the line to get in and so you can see uh tourism is back in sydney australia people are back coming to the zoo this is probably like one of their like biggest tourist attractions uh, but going by there were plenty of people waiting to get in to the zoo and the ferry um now in general, so going around, uh, no mask required outside. I would say most people were not wearing masks outside, but people would still wear masks inside. You know, maybe it's like even though no masks are required in um, shopping centers or restaurants, maybe 20% of just kind of the general public would be wearing masks about around uh, is what it seemed like. Um, <clears throat> Manwish wants to know what's the best time to go to Melbourne. It depends. Do you want summer? Do you want winter? Actually, man, I got a whole video on Melbourne that you could check out, which I answer some of the best seasons that are in there. And actually, if you haven't watched it yet, I'm going to drop a link to my whole uh, Melbourne series playlist in the description of this video. Ooh, if you're watching the archive. Um, I don't know what button I hit there, but that was not the button that I wanted to hit. Uh, all right. Um, and uh, s someone asked if I saw Kathy while I was in Sydney, uh, and I did not. Uh, and Kathy right now is actually in Seattle. So Kathy, welcome to the USA. Kathy's from Australia, for those of you who don't know. Um, Daryl says, I want to go. My wife does not like those long flights. We usually get jet lag for a few nights, uh, but guess who is not open to travel? Japan is not open to travel yet. So let me tell you at least my sort of jet lag story, and then I'll get back to um, what it's like in Sydney. Which is like for me, so the flight that leaves LA at 10 p.m., my goal on that flight is to try and sleep as much as possible. And I'm not really a big like airplane sleeper. I don't sleep well on airplanes, particularly in economy class. And so I just kind of like try to keep my eyes closed as much as possible. And, you know, I pass out every once in a while. Um, but to like exert as little energy as possible. And then getting into Sydney at 7 a.m., my goal is just to stay up as long as I can and then go to sleep early. So I went to bed at like seven um, and then woke up fairly, you know, kind of refreshed the next day at like 8 a.m. So like 13 hours of sleep on that night. And then same thing the next night is like, you know, just turn in early, turn in again at seven, uh, right? Wake up at seven, get that 12 hours. And then I was, I was ready to go. So um, that was my, uh, my personal, how to manage it. Like I generally don't like to take a nap when I get there because then that just kind of like sets everything off kilter. Uh, okay. So one of Sydney's most famous areas is this place called Circular Quay. Uh, you could say it's maybe their central, um, not train station, but it's their central water station. Sydney has a big harbor in it. Uh, and so this is where like all the ferries come in into Sydney's central business district. And Circular Quay, um, if Darling Harbor is like the second most touristy area, Circular Quay is like number one, like cruise ships pull in here. You'll see people like juggling chainsaws and playing the didgeridoo and selling boomerangs and circular key was way less busy than i remember it last time i was there maybe because there wasn't a cruise ship maybe because there's less tourists maybe because there's less people working in the central business district but overall i felt that this neighborhood was much less lively than it used to be um and uh man wish says uh, places you go in Sydney with kids, you should definitely go to the zoo uh, in Sydney with kids. Um, all right. So uh, other things in Circular Key that were sort of odd 
was that um, lots of shops were closed. Lots of shops in what they called the Rocks, which is um, kind of like where Sydney got stars, maybe like the old town of Sydney. They were shops that catered to cruise ships. The cruise ships haven't been pulling in, so n nobody to buy the stuff at those shops. Um, food courts. So there are these neat food courts in Sydney that I kind of like. And actually one of the things that they have in Sydney that I don't know anywhere else is they have Din Tai Fung, which is one of my favorite Taiwanese restaurants. And they have Din Tai Fung in food courts. Din Tai Fung usually has these like long lines. You got to wait for hours to get seated. Um, but here you can order from a food court. They're open Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. That's it. That's it. Like nothing in the evening, nothing on the weekends. And in the food courts, a lot of the stalls I found were just just closed, like closed. Maybe they'd have a paper sign that says like, we don't have enough staff to open. Um, but that seemed to be a fairly common thing of like food stalls either being closed entirely or not having labor to be open. Um, but I did really enjoy, uh, I did really enjoy the Din Tai Fung from the food court. Um, Dean asked if I was uh, here for the Vivid Festival. I was not there for the Vivid Festival, but I imagine if you have a, a special uh, festival, it would be busy. And Kathy said coming to the U.S., she arrived at 7 a.m. and was exhausted. I did a, did a similar flight um, from Sydney back to LAX, but then I'll talk about that experience as we get to the end. So hopefully you're, you're rested up a little bit now, Kathy. Uh, all right, so... Um, I mentioned there's all these ferries. So Circular Key is where you can take the ferries. There's all these water ferries. Ferries have the same requirement, public transit to wear masks. I found the mask wearing compliance on the ferries was like way less than the actual trains. So people figure it's a ferry, it's a boat. Do I really uh, need to wear a mask on here? Um, and uh, Uber, so masks are required inside uh, Uber. I found at least the Uber drivers, the mask compliance of the few I took to be quite high. Uh, different masks, decorated masks, bedazzled masks. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but I never had to wait more than five minutes for an Uber. They were plentiful. The drivers were back. Uh, and uh, that, was, that was nice. Uh, so now for eating out what's eating out like in sydney uh i think it's back to kind of like old time busy you know uh, one of the places i really like in sydney is this uh, malaysian restaurant called mamak um and they specialize in roti and noodles and this is inside of the place small place busy uh what was uh, here we'll take a look at that uh this is the roti which is like a um kind of like a pulled spinned flatbread served with some lentils and served with some fish curry and some chili sambal um, super tasty uh, but they changed up their ordering methods uh, before you used to like order to cash register or order from the wait staff now they've got qr codes on the table which you just kind of like scan your phone and then order on your phone from the qr code which makes it challenging if you don't have a data plan going someplace or you have a 2g data plan um, but i found these qr codes to order to be something around more restaurants in sydney which just makes it even more reason to actually have a data plan i'm sure if i said hey i i don't have a phone or i don't have service uh, there would have been some alternate way to order, but that was the way everybody was ordering, which makes it nice because you don't have to flag down a waiter or those uh, sorts of things. Um, Justin wants to know about Din Tai Fung, if I found anywhere that beats Din Tai Fung. Uh, no, I think Din Tai Fung has the best Shaolong Bao soup dumplings anywhere. Um, and uh, Tyler says, when are you going back to Melbourne? Are the travel restrictions different there? The Australia is open. Um, so there's really no travel restrictions to Australia. So you can go pretty much anywhere you want to. Obviously, this video is about Sydney because that's where I went. Um, but uh, yeah, Australia is open for tourism and open for business. All right. Uh, Sydney has one big casino called the Star Casino. Uh, as you can see from this picture, it was... It was quite lively. And by the way, when I say it's quite lively, uh, sarcasm is also one of the many services that I offer. It was dead. There was like nobody in the Star Casino in Sydney. Uh, now, the Star Casino was one of the first places I saw signs about being offered masks. And also they had signs about um, calling attendance if you want your machine to be sanitized. Now, what I want you to point out, what I want to point out about the sign is it's in English and in Chinese. Every sign at the Star Casino was in English and in Chinese because many of the people who go to the Star Casino are uh, like Chinese tourists and they're, they're just not back, which I think is why uh, 
um, this place was not busy or it was kind of dead. Um, one of the other interesting things in the Sydney city center, well, there's all these buttons to push the cross the street, but now they had screwed these signs over to say, do not push the button, crossing is automated, which makes sense for a lot of the city center ones. I wonder why they still have the button. Maybe they're planning to bring the buttons back again, but there was no, no need to push the button. They didn't put it over the button, they just put it under the button to tell you, do not push the button. Um, Sydney has a very big fish market. Uh, it is like the fifth or sixth biggest fish market in the world. It's the largest fish market in the Southern Hemisphere. And the fish market was hopping. It was busy in Sydney's fish market. Uh, and the food was tasty. Um, what have I got there? I've got like some oysters and some squid and some baby octopus all on, on some chips. Chips, right? The big, big French fries, you know? call them chips in Australia. Those you call chips in Australia. Uh, and Kathy says, uh, love those crossing buttons. They beep at you. They do beep at to let you know uh, where they are and that they're crossing. Um, Emmett wants to know if there's effect on wildlife tours. I didn't make it out really of Sydney to do any wildlife tours. Uh, so I am not too sure. Um, Akash says, what was it like uh, in LAX, when you were departing from there, arriving from Sydney, I will get there, what it was like uh, getting back in LAX as we get to the end of this story. All right. Now, uh, I found out at the Sydney Fish Market why all of my bags that I got uh, were paper and why all of my straws were paper and why all of my forks were made of wood. Uh, and that is that Sydney has a very, uh, not Sydney, but the um, state of New South Wales that Sydney's in, has a very like all encompassing single use plastic ban, um, which in encompasses like plastic utensils and all these other things. Um, so if you are expecting plastic much of anything, uh, don't when you go to Sydney. Maybe bring some plastic straws with you if you love plastic straws. All right, I am thirsty. What am I drinking today? Today, I've got some ume juice. Ume uh, is uh, Japanese plum right here. 12% uh, juice, sparkling sparkling plum juice. Oh, that's good. It's quite kind of got like a, mm, like it's both sweet and sour at the same time. And if you wonder where this ume juice is from, of course, it's made in Japan. And there's a little bit of like ume um, plum pulp swimming around in there too. Tasty, tasty ume juice. All right. Uh, and we run Las Vegas. Thank you very much for the hype sticker in the chat. I appreciate the support to Yellow Productions crew. And Alex Jossie, I see your finger as well. So thank you very much for your support. Um, all right. By the way, and for those of you in the live stream, suitcase giveaway from level eight coming up uh, later in the show. All right. <clears throat> beaches. What were the beaches look like? I went to uh, two beaches in Sydney. I went to Bondi Beach and I went uh, Bondi Beach and I went to Manly Beach. Manly Beach had a lot of stores that were closed, out of business. Um, Bondi Beach seemed less impacted by COVID. Bondi Beach is like Australia's most famous beach. Uh, and so probably because of that, that's just some place where people are still going, people still going. Uh, this is probably one of the most famous things in Bondi Beach. This is the Bondi Icebergs Club. This is a swimming pool that's right along the water. It was winter there, and so the waves are like crashing and breaking over the swimming pool. I really wish I would have brought my um, swim attire to swim in the swimming pool, like $8, it's open to the public. Looked like a lot of fun. I was cold, you know, 62 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, regarding paper, uh, yeah, Kathy says don't like the paper straws. I don't like paper straws either. And I, I tell you what, I mean, in, in um, like California, we some cities have banned um, plastic straws. I carry plastic straws around with me in my car. Um, so for the cities or places I know that I get paper straws, I got a plastic straw because I just, uh, particularly if you're drinking like soda or something sparkling through a paper straw, just ugh, I don't know the way it makes the sparkles go. Uh, but question of if I like this drink. Yeah, this drink is quite good. I would get this again. Mm. Does it have a brand or something? Camino? Like, not like kimono, but kimino. K-I-M-I-N-O. Ume. Plum juice from Japan. 
All right. Uh, Brian says, uh, Bondi Beach is awesome. I liked Coogee Beach as well. I didn't make it down to Coogee. As you get to the weather, was kind of lousy. So um, I started on the walk down to Coogee Beach, and it started to pour. And so then I I, uh, I left at that point. Uh, and Kathy says, Bondi. Bondi with an I. Bondi with an I. All right. Thank you for that, Kathy. Uh, and uh, Dean says, I believe things were less busy as COVID numbers are rising, so more people are staying home than a few months ago. All right. Thank you for that uh, perspective, too. And Sarah uh, hates the paper straws, and she brings a metal one. All right, that's a um, creative way of doing it, too. <clears throat> Garrett uh, says, uh, I want to visit Australia. I want to visit Steve Irwin Zoo. That would be fun. Um, oh, and people say, is my drink like a beer? This is non-alcoholic. It's a, just a sparkling plum juice. Okay. Speaking of zoos, uh, I went to the Taronga Zoo, uh, and they close at 4.30. I got there at 3.30, and I, like, I had a hard time buying tickets to go into the zoo. I mean, there are like so few visitors in Sydney that they don't sell tickets. Like, an, like the zoo's still open for an hour, but there was like nobody to buy a ticket from. Obviously, I was able to get a ticket, so I could go in and take a picture of this little koala who was sleeping at the time. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that says something overall about the tourism infrastructure uh, when they're not selling you tickets and they're still open for an hour yet to come. Now, um, shopping, uh, like a hive of shopping is Sydney's central business district. I felt like shopping in Sydney's best central business district was alive and well. It's one of the cool places called the Strand Arcade from the 1800s. Uh, but uh, one other place in Sydney didn't seem to be doing too well was Sydney's Paddy's Markets. This is like a historic market that was built to resemble a, like a European market that's now kind of turned more into like a flea market that you would find in Asia. Um, but probably a third of the stalls here were just kind of like out of business and closed. Feels like a, again, swap meet flea market sort of thing. If you're looking for uh, the cheapest souvenirs in Sydney where you can bring back a didgeridoo or a boomerang or a koala or an umbrella, uh, you'll find it in Paddy's Markets. But you might find that those businesses that were there before um, have now turned into m massage parlors or other uh, kind of odd things just to fill space. Um, so another place I stopped for dinner, I like the Malaysian food. I stopped in this place called Ho Jack. And this place was so busy. It's in Chinatown, uh, like a line out the door. And then I got into this place and it was so busy, like it's so packed in that the staff, the wait staff could not actually walk between tables to take orders. Like to take my order, they were like taking my order like across a table or something like that. Uh, and so there did not appear to really be any like, um, you know, dinner, social distancing, you gotta sit this far apart, or we got rid of tables, something like that. It's sort of like, pack them in just like we used to. All right. Uh, Tracy, thank you very much for the, um, for the gamepad in the chat. I appreciate the support. Uh, what did I have at Hoja? I like I like laksa. Laksa is something that is really good uh, in Australia. Laksa is a, um, Malaysian, but also really popular in Singapore soup uh, that is a spicy coconut-based soup with two different types of noodles. Generally has some shrimp, chicken, bean sprouts. Super delicious. Super hard to find in the U.S., uh, but is all over Australia, no doubt, due to the much closer proximity to Malaysia. So it's always uh, something I seek out. Uh, JN2 says, uh, how long were you in Sydney? Just a little under a week. Paul says, go to the Gold Coast next time. I hope to, it is on my list. And Kat says, did you see the Opera House? I sure did see the Opera House. Um, when you see a, another Sydney video coming out, you'll see a thumbnail of Chris and the Opera House because that's the most classic building there in Sydney. Now, a place where shopping was kind of dead was uh, in Darling Harbor. There's this plaza here called the Harborside Shopping Center. I think this one catered to mostly tourists. This shopping mall was like super sad. I, I think over 50% of the stores in this mall were closed as a place, like not like closed because it was Tuesday, but just like not in business anymore. Um, so I think this is a place that really struggled with the lack of tourists. <clears throat> now, a new neighborhood in Sydney 
is called uh, Barangaroo, and this neighborhood was quite lively. Uh, they're building all these like high rises that are up here. This is between Darling Harbor and the Opera House. Uh, lots of trendy bars and restaurants. You know, but the shop still closes at 6 p.m. Even though the bars and the restaurants are open late, I don't understand why like all the shops close at 6 p.m. on weekdays. I, my fellow Aussies, uh, why do stores in Australia close so early? When do people shop? Because it seems like the shops are only open when everybody's at work and then nobody has the time to shop. I don't know. I could, I could like never get into uh, half the shops because they were always closed all the time. Something kind of new I found on this trip to Sydney from previous trips to Sydney is a lot of vendors, almost everybody would take credit cards. I took out like very little cash. I spent very little cash, um, but many places charging some kind of credit card surcharge. So if you use a credit card somewhere between uh, 15 cents to like 4%, and I know those are different things, but some places would charge like a set, like a we charge you this many cents to use your card, um, or we charge you uh, a certain percentage. And, and this place also, I don't know if you see the wording there, but uh, they also do not spill spill it. They also do not spill it to the payments. So I don't, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't ask them about spilling the payments. Uh, and and Kathy says. Um, we shop weekends and late Friday and Saturday. Why, why are the stores open the rest of the week then? If people can only go on Thursdays, and Fridays, and Saturdays, that's that's what I wonder. Uh, Anna Kusha says Thursdays late, and I said, so is that so is that it? Like everybody like then says, okay, like the stores are open late this one night, so that's like that's the shopping night. Is that when everybody goes? I guess that must be when everybody goes because that's when they're open. Uh, Jean says, are prices expensive in Sydney? Uh, Sydney is one of the most expensive cities in the world. So from like a cost of living perspective, I would say Sydney is expensive. Although as an American visiting Sydney, the like exchange rate um, was quite good. It was like a dollar 45 Australian to one US dollars. So I didn't find it expensive, but I think it like it can be depending upon the exchange rate. Chris said, I'm seeing a lot of those card surcharges in Ohio too. Uh, interesting, uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, late night shopping uh, till nine. Uh, and Dean said, Chris, you said it right. Shop hours are bad. As someone who works eight to five, I have about 30 minutes a week to shop. Dean, I'm glad it's not just me as a visitor that wonders that, um, but that you kind of say that uh, somebody who lives there too. Um, and Kathy says, yes, very expensive. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, so another, I, I eat a lot of Asian food while I'm in Australia just because the Asian food uh, is really good. And that restaurant that um, didn't spill it, spill it, the payments, uh, it was called Malay Malay. Uh, and I had a really delicious uh, Hainan chicken rice while I was there. Now on the news in Sydney when I left, there was uh, talk about returning the mask mandate for indoors. You know, maybe maybe the mass mandate is going to be returning for indoors with rising covid cases and so uh, i mean when you go you should check like if you're planning a trip to sydney you should check before you go because just like me before i went um i thought there were going to be a bunch of like covid tests and vaccine proofs and like three days you know before uh like, like they did all the way with that um and so things change they come and they go the mass mandate in la they've been talking about bringing that back because covid cases are uh, rising here in los angeles um, but they ultimately decide not to because then they saw them falling again. But it's probably worthwhile to bring some masks with you just in case. Uh, Kathy says, the exchange here was good for me. It's not good for Kathy coming over to the US. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, Kathy. I know the US just got more expensive on that exchange rate. Um, Garrett says, are Australian people rude? I don't think so. I think Australian people are uh, some of the friendliest, funniest people around. Okay, uh, so now let's talk about coming back, coming back from Australia. I heard some questions about, Chris, what was it like leaving Australia, come back to LAX? Um, well, if you started this live stream at the beginning, I said it took me an hour to check in at LAX. Uh, it took me longer at Sydney's airport. Sydney's airport was really uh, quite rough. It took, I mean, okay, in the domestic terminal on the news, there were reports while I was there of people waiting 
three to four hours to get through security at the domestic terminal in Sydney. That like it was so bad that they set up like tents for the lines at the Sydney domestic airport. The international terminal was nowhere near as bad. Uh, this is the line to check in to my flight, which you can see is quite a long line. Uh, this is then the line to go through security. And it's not like, I mean, it, it's a line. It's like, -na 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 -na. it's like a Disneyland long line. At least it wasn't outside the building, it was in the building. But from the time I got dropped off from the taxi uh, to the time I was at the gate was two hours. And it wasn't two hours of Chris looking at shops and uh, looking at, you know, like eating lunch or something like that. Like that was like, that was like two hours of like, waiting time so uh if you are going to sydney and when you're leaving make sure to plan a lot of time to leave the airport if you actually want to get your flight i would recommend um getting to the airport three or four hours before your flight to make sure you got enough time to get through these lines and what was sort of funny is in the lines they had these signs that said, hey, like you, uh, we're being affected by the labor shortage. Uh, thank you for your patience. And, and by the way, if you're looking for a job, we are actually hiring on the news. They said that Sydney Airport was looking to hire 5,000 people. Um, so, uh, yeah, and just in time says, I thought LAX was bad. You know, my experience at LAX was so much better than my experience at the Sydney airport. Uh, Kathy says, uh, for her, it only took 30 minutes to check in, even use the Qantas lounge. I guess it, you know, depends on the day, depends on the time. I was out on a Saturday, which probably Saturday morning, uh, I could see is, you know, one of the busier international travel times. <clears throat> now, I still did have enough time to get over to the Singapore Airlines lounge. Kathy said they went to the uh, Qantas Lounge, but at Silver Chris is the um, Singapore Lounge since I fly with United, at Star Alliance has Lounge. Uh, the Singapore Airlines Lounge was in full swing. Um, I had some great dim sum, some tea, and some, some potato chips, or some crisps, as they might be called. Mm. All right, so the flight back to the U.S. Uh, oh, just one last point about shops. Uh, not all the shops in the Sydney airport are open. Um, lots of shops that had signs to be like, this one's closed, go visit the other one. Lots of shops that just seem to not be open. Uh, but overall, Sydney Airport, the International Terminal, quite nice, looks like this. Um, and so it wasn't like super busy, but there just weren't enough people to process uh, everybody at security and customs. So the 13 and a half hour flight, it's shorter coming from Australia to Los Angeles. Uh, the timing of that one leaves Sydney at like 9 a.m and gets into LAX at like 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. It's kind of like a back in time machine where you go back in time because the time changes. But the good news, we got Tim Tams, which are a Australian, uh, I don't know, like biscuit that has chocolate on it. Pretty tasty. I always like some of the uh, unique local food on my flight. Um, and United uh, is doing these new things with their pillows where they're now um, like neck pillows. They're um, connected together, but you can open it up. And if you want a neck pillow, then you got a neck pillow there with United, which I thought was also kind of cool. First time I have seen that. Um, now this was my arrival into LAX at 6 a.m. Uh, and if you look at how busy the airport is, it was not busy at all. Let me tell you, if you're timing an arrival into Los Angeles International Airport. 6 a.m. is the time you want to get there. I think we were the like first or second flight to arrive into the airport. I have never had a faster arrival into LAX. Uh, and something that was actually kind of neat into LAX, so I've got um, global entry. I'm planning to do a whole video in the future about um, what's the difference between like TSA PreCheck, Clear, and global entry. Uh, but global entry is a program for US citizens and Canadians and a few associates uh, to be able to like expedite entry into the US so you don't have to like stand in line and passport control. And previously the global entry terminals, you had to like put in your passport and it would uh, like take your fingerprints. Now the global entry terminals at LAX, you walk up to a little, like it almost looks like an iPad or a tablet on a stand. And it says like, uh, look here, look into the camera, remove your glasses, remove your mask. And I go up to this thing and I do that. And then it, it just says, thank you, please proceed. 
and I, I clearly look very confused. No, like there's no line. I just walk up to this like thing, it's his tablet, and I look at the camera and it says, please proceed. And I, I turn to look at the um, customs agent and the customs agent goes, Christopher, as, as she's looking at her tablet, that obviously has everybody's pictures and names on it. Well, because when you look in the machine, she says, Christopher, I'm like, yeah. She's like, you're good to go. I'm, what, what? I don't, I don't need to show anybody my passport. I don't need to stand in line. I don't need to talk to anybody. I don't need to put any fingerprints. I don't need to uh, fill out a form. I just look into a screen and I go. I, let me tell you, I was delighted by Global Entry's new entry system. So if anybody from um, Department of Homeland Security is watching this and wants to know what people think about that new entry tablets, I loved it. Um, all right, and uh, <clears throat> you know, but overall, um, other, th other than five days of constant rain in Sydney because it was winter when I was there, uh, it was great to be back in Australia once again. Australia's open. Um, I felt really welcome. All the tourist amenities were open, although maybe some of the shops are closed, but all the major attractions in Sydney uh, are open. Uh, and Sydney and the rest of Australia is open and welcoming tourists once again. So if you're thinking about going, I'd encourage you to go. Just uh, expect to pay more for your flights. Expect to pay more for your hotels. Uh, and, um, you know, expect to wait in line at the airports. But just, you know, lean into those things and do it, and I think you'll have an awesome trip. Fellow explorers, it is now Q&A time. If you've got a question, I've got an answer. All right, fellow explorers, it's now time uh, for questions and answers. If you asked a question I didn't answer before, go ahead and ask it again. Um, and if you didn't have one, but it's just brewing, go ahead and ask it. Once we do a little bit of questions, then I'll be doing the giveaway right here for two suitcases. I have two suitcases from level eight cases. I have this Voyager uh, check-in and I have this glitter carry-on and I'll be giving these away today. Not the, I traveled with these to test them out, um, but level eight cases was kind enough to offer two new ones that they will ship to anybody in the United States, the UK or the EU. Sorry for my Australian friends or my Canadian friends. Um, costs a lot to ship suitcases, uh, and that's where they've got their warehouses uh, right now. Uh, and if you don't win one um, and you did want to pick one up, uh, I'll drop a link in the description below. And actually, Level 8 Cases is offering a special deal to Yellow Productions viewers. Uh, you can pick one up with code Yellow Productions 10 for 10% off one of these cases. But... I just, I love that it was yellow. I mean, how often do you find yellow suitcases? And so we got that, we got that one right here. Uh, and Kathy says if she wins, she can pick it up. Yes, Kathy, um, you can pick it up if you win. You are eligible uh, to win one of these suitcases. Uh, Kenny asks, when did I come to the DC area? Uh, I've had a couple trips to the DC area recently, but I guess the one, um, I don't know, maybe like a month ago, two months ago, something like that. Uh, what's the best food s South Australia is best known for? Hmm, I don't know about that. Uh, I will tell you something that's, I mean, particularly, or is that South Africa? I'm, I'm not sure, Emmett. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to my Australian friends on here to maybe say what um, South Australia is known for. Gus wants to know, not travel related, but do you have a favorite video game? My favorite video game is Dance Dance Revolution in the arcades. That's my favorite video game because I am a huge geek. Uh, no filter says uh, not for uh, Canadians. No, sorry, not for Canadians. No, um, no warehouse up there just yet for level eight cases. Um, Garrett asks if I did a review of them. I will have a review coming of them. So yes, one is recorded uh, and will be coming out soon. Um, uh, Travel Adventures says global entry is the best when returning home. So easy and quick. Uh, my dad, Electric Creek, asks if I heard any good jokes during my trip. I don't know. I didn't. I promise. I'm sure I did. Uh, this isn't a joke, but I felt like one of the Australian phrases that I heard that I liked the most was when people were referring to being hungover. They were saying, uh, you know, feeling a little dusty in the morning. You know, after I've had a big night on the town, I feel a little dusty in the morning, which I just thought was a great Australian phrase. Um, and uh, let's see. 
Uh, Kathy says South Australia is known for their pie floater. What is a pie floater, Kathy? One of the most Australian foods I think I had was uh, in Sydney in Woolloomooloo, and I just love the name of the neighborhood Woolloomooloo because it has um, eight O's in the neighborhood. Uh, but there's a famous place that, like, the first name of it escapes me, but it's like some Cafe de Wheels. That's like Sydney's first food truck, uh, and they have a meat, like a, a meat pie, like a beef meat pie that they then put uh, mashed potatoes on top and mushy peas and gravy. And that's one of the uh, most famous things to get in Sydney because it's Sydney's first food truck. Um, so there we go. Uh, Tiffany says, what's the best Vegas hotel to take a child under one years old? Um, I really liked Resorts World. I think Resorts World is super nice, super clean. Uh, I think if you had a little kid uh, with you at Resorts World, you wouldn't feel like it's like grimy or seedy or things like that. Uh, or you might choose to stay at a hotel that like doesn't have a casino at all. Maybe something like Merritt's Grand Chateau or the... Um, Waldorf Astoria Hotel that's over in City Center. Uh, Tokyo Spin says, have you been doing lots of research on when you can eventually come here to Japan? Any particular area you are keen on uh, when I, you know, still doesn't look super promising because still right now it's only uh, accompanied trips. Like you have to be with like a tour guide when you go. Um, I don't know. I don't know where we'll go next. There's uh, one of the areas that we're thinking about going next um, and that we just we just haven't like been to all that much uh, is the kind of like central Japan, like the region kind of around like um, Nagoya. Uh, like I've been to Nagoya once for like two hours that I took the bullet train to. Um, so I think it, like the Aichi prefecture, I think it'd be neat to explore that uh, region. Uh, have I ever been to Dubai? I have not been to Dubai yet, uh, but I'd like to. Uh, Grant says, Marriott Grand Chateau is my go-to. Marriott Grand Chateau in Vegas, plus two right there from Grant for the win. Marriott Grand Chateau would be really good with a little one because uh, it's kind of like a timeshare property, and so you can even get like more bedrooms, got like a kitchen, like a fridge, all that sort of stuff. Um, Gene asks if I've ever stayed in Kyoto. I've never stayed in Kyoto. Um, when we go to Kyoto, we generally stay in Osaka because the hotels are way cheaper. Uh, and then like Osaka is like a 15 minute train ride um, to Kyoto. Uh, Park High had just opened a, ho a hotel in Kyoto. So I actually would like to stay there. Uh, everybody's pontificating about when's Japan gonna be open. Justin says probably not for a while. I don't blame them. Um, Painkiller says, I hope you can uh, consider visiting Armenia one day. Beautiful scenery, great food, lots of history, very affordable once you're there. All right, thanks for that wishes. I've not been to Armenia, so it's definitely on the list of potential places to go. And Susanna says that place that I mentioned for the meat pies is Harry's Cafe de Wheels. Thank you, Susanna, for that. That is indeed the name. Uh, my brain was not working correctly. Um, the Traveling Foodies have just checked in. Welcome, Traveling Foodies, to the live stream. Uh, and uh, I always love to see we've got fellow Australians on the chat, particularly when we're talking about Australia. Ray says, good morning from Sydney. Good morning from Sydney. And Garrett says, let's get some organ videos. All right, Garrett, where in organ shall I go? Um, JN2 says, have you ever visited Canberra Mata in Sydney? It's the biggest Asian Vietnamese community in Australia. It's big like Orange Grove, Westminster. No, I've, uh, I guess that when I go to Sydney, I usually visit um, Chinatown, which is like Haymarket or something like that, but I have not visited uh, Canberra Mata. But I love all the Asian food, like I say, around Chinatown, Haymarket. Like it, to me, it seems more of a Asia town rather than a Chinatown. Um, Anushka says, have I ever visited Croatia? Not yet. Uh, I think it'd be neat to go to Croatia, Dubrovnik, places like that. It looks beautiful uh, where I see it. Uh, Village Idiot says, great catching a live video of yours. Enjoy as always. Thank you for tuning in, uh, Village Idiot. And uh, Gwendolyn gives another plus one for Merrick Grand Chateaus is they have no resort fees. I agree. I hate resort fees. Uh, Gus says, I was in Dubrovnik in late June. Fantastic. I will keep that in mind as a good time to visit. What's the best airline, in your opinion, to fly with? I think this has like 
two parts to this answer. What's the best airline? <clears throat> and what airline does Chris fly with the most? Uh, my favorite airline is probably Singapore Airlines. I love Singapore Airlines. Singapore Airlines is just amazing. Their service is amazing. Um, staff's amazing. Planes are amazing. Their lounges are amazing. I just love it. Like if, if I have an opportunity to get on Singapore Airlines to go someplace, I'm definitely doing that. I also love the service on um, the Japanese airlines. So uh, I love JAL. Um, I love ANA. Um, their planes aren't maybe as fancy as like the Middle Eastern planes, like Emirates or things like that. But I just, I love the Japanese service. Um, the airline I fly with the most is United. Uh, United flies a lot where I fly. I love that they partner with Star Alliance. I love that they have a lot of good flights to Asia. Um, I love that their flights are usually inexpensive. Uh, they're not like the cheapest, um, but I've, all, I've got a million miles with United. And so that kind of like locks me into like better seats and more bags and short lines. And so um, I'm sort of like locked into United as an ecosystem. I guess I'm not locked in, but I choose to. Phil asks if they put a shrimp on the Barbie for me. Of course, mate. Of course they put it on. Many shrimps on the Barbie while I was there. John says, when you come back to Canada, we have a trip booked to Canada uh, fly back into Vancouver to come to Whistler. Uh, JN2 agrees with me. Singapore Airlines, 101%. That's a lot of percentages. All right. Um, and uh, Daryl says Flying Star Alliance doesn't get you a... Yeah, you, in order to get the lifetime miles with United, you have to fly in United. It doesn't count if you fly in another... Star Alliance Carrier. Twink says, which airline has the best airline food? I think Singapore Airlines has the best airline food. Their food is delicious. They even will do uh, satay or like kind of like the meat on a stick um, on the plane, but not to and from flights uh, to the U.S. because to and from flights to the U.S., the U.S. doesn't allow them to have an open flame on the plane to do that. But if you're flying from like Singapore to Thailand or something like that, then you can get satay on the plane. And it's really good. I was assuming you're in business class and economy. It's so, you know. Like, all food is okay. Uh, never had a chance to fly with Singapore. Mostly fly with Emirates, uh, but we'll definitely try it. Yeah, try it out. Um, I like it. Uh, Paint Killer says, when I flew Singapore Airlines from LA to Tokyo, uh, I felt like any other airline's economy seat. It had a great price, though. I guess, I guess when I say I like Singapore Airlines, I really like the business class service. I feel like almost any airline's economy class seat is almost like any other airline's economy class seat, right? They're, like, cheap. They're in the back. They fill up the plane. Um, Kathy uh, wants to know which beach has the best parking, Newport or Huntington. Huntington Beach definitely has better parking than uh, Newport does because Huntington has like tons of parking lots all across the beach. Um, Newport Beach is definitely more challenging. If you go to Newport Beach, I would try to get there before 1030 to find parking. Um, and if you're going to Huntington Beach and you can't find any parking there's a shopping mall called pacific city that has a parking garage underneath it's pay parking but it's a place you'll be able to park pacific city uh Le jardine says which airline card you would suggest is delta gold amex worth it uh whatever airline you fly the most with would be the card that i recommend if you fly with delta i get the delta card i have the united i've got two united credit cards i have a delta card i have two american airlines cards um but you know, I think for rewards, if you're like, well, I don't have an airline I fly with the most, then you actually might want to get like a card like the Chase Sapphire card that you can earn points to transfer to multiple different airlines. All right. Now, Grant points, Grant clarifies my answer related to parking that Newport Beach is better than Huntington Beach. And with that, I, I would agree. Thank you for that. Uh, and L... Chancho says, uh, sorry, I am late to the stream. I'm excited to go to Sydney for the first time. You're one of my go-to YouTubers and planning trips. Thanks for all you do. Hey, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, all right. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. Yes, it's the time you've been waiting for. It's time for the giveaway. All right, fellow explorers, as on every live stream, it's time for the giveaway, and today is the special giveaway of these level eight suitcases right here. I'll be giving away a 24-inch Voyager check-in in, in gray. Not this one. This one's yellow. This one's mine. The one you'll be getting is the 24-inch gray one, and I'll be giving away the 20-inch glitter carry-on. Now, what do you need to do to win? I will take the first two people that answer this question correctly. The first winner gets the... Voyager case. The second winner gets the glitter case. And I am looking for just 
numbers to this question. The numbers to this question are the plane that I flew from Los Angeles to Sydney. What was the model number of that plane? And if you're the first two people to put that into the chat, then you will win one of these suitcases provided you live in the US, UK, or European Union. So go ahead and do that right now. Now, if you're wondering, uh, hey, when is the next live stream? We'll head over to update.yellow-productions.com, sign up for the Yellow Productions mailing list, and you will know as soon as everybody else knows when the next live stream is. It will not be next week, it will be two weeks from now. Uh, all right, and with that, uh, I see some answers coming in the chat. Um, so let me do my search and we will get the answers right here. And now we have a winner, winner chicken dinner. All right, we have got some winners in the chat. Uh, now, I will say our our first, the first correct answer is from Panjo. But Panjo, ah, do you live in Canada? Do you live in Canada, Panjo? Unfortunately, Canada is not one of the places that they will ship the suitcases. Uh, and so, Panjo, I'm going to hold that. If you have a U.S. place to ship it, then you may win number one. But I know, Panjo, I just, like, you just won. And where did where did you win? And where do I ship? I shipped it to Canada. So, Panjo, I'm going to send you another shirt for being number one. Um, but then we're going to get number two. So, Garrett, you are going to win right here the... Voyager check-in case. Congratulations, Garrett. You were there. And then number two, Jake, you win the 20-inch glitter spinner. So Garrett, Jake, congratulations. Garrett and Jake, uh, please send me an email to chris at yellow-productions.com. Let me know your address and I will get those to you. Panjo, so sorry that it wasn't going to Canada, but I will make sure you can pick two shirts actually, so you can send me an email and let me know where you want to get those shirts. And if you didn't win one and you wanna check it out at the um, Level 8 Cases website, I've got a link in the descriptions below and you can use right there code Yellow Productions 10 and that will give you 10% off uh, any of their cases if you wanna pick one of these up. Uh, and then I got some people that said, what about me? Heaven Knows? Heaven Knows wants to know where Heaven Knows was in the answer. If you wanna know who came in next after Panjo, Garrett, and Jake, the next up, you don't win, but their consolation prizes, number four was No Filter, number five was Heaven Knows, number six was Michael Yip, eight, J Dev, Chris Cole, so there we go. Those were like, the top 10, and Kathy, you were after points traveler, Dean, and there you go. That's the, that is the top 10 right there. Um, well, fellow explorers, it has been a pleasure to hang out with you today, as it always is. I'd like to thank Level A Cases for the cool giveaway today in this live stream, and as usual, I won't say goodbye, because I'm going to see you in the next video.